Well, I have straight up nine o'clock. And so let's just go ahead and, uh, and hop in. And, um, and I don't, just on behalf of the Center for Church Development of the North Texas Conference, I welcome all of you here. Well, I have been familiar with GLUE for a couple of years now uh, since I moved in there. I've been very impressed with their work that they have done. Um, I've appreciated how their, their kind of new focus, I don't know if they appreciate this or not, but I, I often refer to them as the home advisor for the church. Uh, I use home advisor, you know, for, for, different, uh, for different things. You know, I put, I need driveway help and home advisor does one single advertisement. You tell them what you need. And then they connect you with, with service professionals. And Glue uh, has similarly been doing wide advertisement um, of, of our product, which is, which is the gospel. Uh, and they you know, share, you know, uh, advertise that, and then persons connect with them, and then they'll connect with our local church. And I just think that is a, a gift for the local church. It is an ecumenical organization, which I think is is. We need more of that nowadays in a, in a world that's living in great division that the, we can offer a witness of unity among that. And um, so I give thanks that they have been very intentional about including the United Methodist Church in their work and, uh, and have reached out to us uh, in a very consistent way that I'm, I'm appreciative of and I'm appreciate for all of you being here today to explore this and how we can connect more people in our mission fields with our local churches. And if it's all right, uh, before I, I, I turn it over to Steele and I will open us up in prayer and then uh, let Glue take it away. Does that work? All right, well, let us pray. First of all, Lord, we do thank you for this day and for the technology, the opportunity we have to be together. Mindful where two or more are gathered in your name, you are present. May we be mindful of your presence with the presence of the connection that although there are times we feel alone in our work, you've placed sisters and brothers among us to accompany us, to support us, to encourage us. Help us be mindful that we are your instruments and that we have received grace upon grace from you. Great in Christ's name. Amen. All right, still. Oh, and thank you so much. Uh, man, what a what an incredible opportunity to be with you guys, and, and so many of you. Thank you so much for for leaning in, as Owen said, Jessica. Thank you so much for just the the work that you uh, you put in to help organize and, and coordinate all of this, and uh, all the the planning meetings that have gone into making sure that we are covering the topics that are the most relevant to everyone here. Uh, my name is Steel Billings. Uh, on the call with us, I, I see a couple of other glue folks, uh, Abby Schuler. We'll, uh, we'll maybe pop in and out. Uh, Chris Nelson, I think you're also here, at least for a period. And so uh, grateful to the team around us. Um, for the last 10 years, I have had the opportunity to really challenge the church when it comes to innovation. And, uh, and there have been ups and downs and all of that. And in 2020 was a, a wild year of maybe some, uh, some faster ups and downs, let's say. And you know, throughout 2020, we we went from a place at Glue of launching one of the largest faith initiatives that we'd ever seen, called State of the Church 2020. It was going to be the clearest picture we had ever had of the church, not just in America but worldwide, and not just from the mouths of the ministry leaders, but from the congregants themselves. And then, what are what do the people outside of the church say about the church? And for the first time ever, we were going to have this clear picture of what does the Bride of Christ really look like from church leaders, pastors, congregants, and unchurched. Um, that launched on March 10th of 2020. And on March 13th of 2020, we went into a national emergency um, and begun really just digging in. Glue, glue did not step back in that moment. Glue leaned forward in that moment. And we said, okay, if the Lord brought us to that moment, because that was about a year's worth of planning, a year's worth of building infrastructure, for the next seven days, we learned from uh, so many ministry leaders. We, we pulled network leaders, denominational leaders, pastors, church staff. We pulled everybody in um, to meetings, and we were meeting around the clock for seven days. Our engineers started working as we were hearing things, and we released on March 20th something called the Crisis Toolkit. Um, the Crisis Toolkit saw about 25,000 churches 
onboard to it and use those tools throughout 2020 and into 2021. And what we're going to be talking about today is largely the learnings or, or the response to those learnings. And I hope that what we talk about today is really encouraging to you. Uh, you know, as Owen, you talk about, um, you know, the, the loneliness sometimes that comes along with ministry and, and we get to be reminded in moments like this and we look around and we see all the other ministry that's happening and we get to be encouraged. I hope that today is really encouraging because there are um, big organizations coming to your side right now like never before. And, and this is what today is about, to tell you about what's happening, to tell you about the people that are rushing in, the energy that is rushing in, the capital that is rushing in, um, the, the spirit of, hey, this is a rescue mission that we are going on in this post-COVID world where we get to rush in and we get to tell people that Jesus is for them. And so I'm going to break all of that stuff down for you today. Um, so really grateful. I'm going to go ahead and jump right in. And uh, I've got some slides. Uh, first, I'll, I'll give you just a quick background of Glue and what we do and, and what we're about, why we're doing all of this. Um, and uh, But we'll spend most of our time today talking about something called Glue Connect and, and a campaign that uh, we're going to highlight Glue Connect is all about bridging the gap between online explorers. And so those are individuals that are out there looking for help um, in times of need. They're, they're very much looking for a message of hope. They are looking for the gospel. And in many cases, they don't know it, but that's really what they're looking for. They're looking for hope. Um, and so this is all about bridging the gap between those individuals and your church. I'm gonna start us out with a video. In fact, let me just redo my screen share so I can share sound. And uh, we've got a few videos today that we'll actually watch. And the first one we did called Man on the Streets. It's a project that we launched where we could learn uh, more about what is it that explorers are out there saying? What do people say about the church? Um, what is the, the skeptic's opinion, if you will, around would I ever go to a church um, in time of need or in, in moments of help? So we'll start with that video in just a second. Glue for the last 12 years has been building technologies, various technologies, and we are now uh, launching a platform. And we launched it last year called Glue Connect. Uh, it is getting a renewed energy now and it is officially taking off. In fact, on March 15th, there's going to be a, a whole lot of energy poured into that. We'll, we'll talk more about that in just a moment. But you see some of the partners on here, you see some of the applications that we've built. And it's funny that you mentioned Home Advisor earlier because our CEO, Scott Beck, is actually one of the minds behind Home Advisor. He's also one of the minds behind some of the brands that you see here, like Blockbuster. Uh, when he walked into the very first Blockbuster store, he, he looked around, he said, this has to be everywhere. Uh, he became the, uh, the, the chairman of Blockbuster and took it to 7,000 stores. Um, he exited in the early 90s. Uh, he was a part of Boston Chicken, turned it into Boston Market. Einstein Bagels uh, was the chairman and uh, the mind behind family life for many years. Ancestry.com and others. Uh, and now it's all around how do we take what we've learned throughout all of those experiences and use it to build an infrastructure underneath the church so that it can do the same thing that he's seen in some of those other industries. It can have scale. How do we allow ministry to happen at scale, maybe like we've never seen before? That is the mission of Blue. Uh, so let me get started with this video and uh, I'll come back and we'll talk about it. Today we're out on the streets and we're asking the simple question, who do you turn to in a time of need? <laughs> my dad, my mom. Yeah, I would turn to my family. Probably social media. I will put out a public statement on Instagram and I did that yesterday. What I turn to in the time of need, uh, I would say I, I definitely turn to my beautiful fiance. Ask Google. First thing to my parents probably. I would lean towards going towards God and definitely not the government. From the professional standpoint, it's more or less looking at maybe banking institutions. The best place when you actually need you need help and you're, you're looking for help is to honestly look for someone who's actually done what you're trying to do. And when you have a need, who's the first person that you reach out to, your list? First, I would ask myself. I would try to do it for myself first. Oh, I'm a Google queen. I Google every single thing. Okay, Google. I honestly go to Google University. My mom. 
Moms are always nurturing. That's who you should go to for your, you know, comfort. Second person is God. Third person is my sponsor. <laughs> I'm going to search the depths of my own experience. I'm also a big fan of, you know, a drink. <laughs> First, turn to your local community. And is there ever a time when you'd reach out to the church? Honestly, yeah, a church is on that list. I, I've tried it before, and it, it's not something that necessarily fits me. If I didn't really have like any of my friends or family and I felt like I didn't have anyone to talk to, then I would go to the church. Not at all. Not even a thought. I was raised in the basement of a Baptist church. Absolutely not. <laughs> Probably not. I was raised in the church. I don't go to church as much anymore. That's not a reason. I don't, I don't, I'm not a member at a church. I don't have a church to turn to. <laughs> See, I would definitely turn to prayer. Yeah. But I mean, let's just be real. I mean, you can turn to prayer, but sometimes God doesn't answer the prayers. It's immediately. I am an active and very, very, very um, into, uh, like witchcraft. I love my tarot reading. <laughs> I love my pendulums, um, my crystals. I'm a crystal bitch. No, I don't like organized religion. I mean, the thing with churches, and I'm not trying to be on anybody, get on anybody's faith, but they don't have a lot of resources. What would Jesus do? That's the question. What would Jesus do? I've, I've slept with a few girls that are Christian. We're cool. Like, if I was in this situation and I need some help, what would Jesus do? Yeah, help somebody. Everybody really has the same understanding as this one really higher power, but I mean, you just really find where you fit in. All right. So, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's interesting. Let me restart this, guys. Uh, I've seen that video many times, and my heart breaks in the, the same way, I think, each time. Let me walk you guys through, you know, here's, here's what, what I'm about to show you is what a lot of research um, we have found. And, you know, the, the reason that we were meeting with a group of leaders last year, and they, I asked them, I said, why do, why do you have this hope that all of a sudden things are going to change? You, you've been doing these, um, these types of meetings, you, you've been on the front edge of innovation for so long. And, um, you know, why do you have this re renewed hope? In fact, this was Claude King that I was talking to, the one of the co-authors of Experiencing God. And he said, he said, the technology exists today that we didn't have then. And I believe that, that God is going to use the technology in a mighty way. And so let me show you what we're able to do now with some of the technology. We're actually able to understand the people that you just saw in those video better than we ever have before. These are the actual search terms that people are going to Google for. And, um, and we are actually finding these people that are searching Google with these exact terms. And we're able to start to change the message that they get in response to it. Things like anxiety symptoms. What are the signs of depression? What causes anxiety? Give me a love languages qu quiz or a love languages test. What do I do about emotional abuse? These are the actual search terms that people are searching Google for. The technology exists so that we can actually understand these things now. We can understand and we can intersect people in these moments where they are to a place of desperation that they're searching for answers anywhere. And you heard so many people in the video, they're going to Google for those answers. They're searching online. So what do we do about that? Well, what we found at the end of 2020, on October 8th, 2020, we launched an initiative that we were asking a question of what if we took this campaign energy, and we were able to actually intersect these people in these moments, and we were able to change the narrative. And, and instead of, if somebody searched things like divorce, instead of showing them how easy it is to get a divorce, because if you search divorce right now, you would see things like 99 divorce or have a divorce, you know, have it filed in 15 minutes. What if we said, no, we're actually going to show up in those moments with hope and with help. And so the idea behind this is, is a campaign called He Gets Us. I'm gonna show you all the details around this, but it comes from about a year's worth of research where we go out and we understand, okay, what do people say about the church? But then what do people say about Jesus? And there's a whole nother video that I'm not gonna show you today, uh, but it's just as powerful as the one that you just saw. And the response to Jesus is actually not quite the skeptic's view that you just heard about the church. The response to Jesus is, 
I think he was a good man. I probably would have liked him. I probably would have liked the things that he said. You know, I, I, I think I believe the things that he said about loving people and loving others. And so you have this sort of different view between the church and Jesus. And so he gets us as all around anchoring in to Jesus. It is all around taking the message of Jesus out to the world and telling them Jesus is for you. Jesus gets you. And Jesus actually has a bride. And the name is the church. And let me explain the purpose of the church. And the purpose is to serve you. And the purpose is to love. And the purpose is to bring you together. And so that's where we are working on this bridge called Glue Connect that bridges from campaigns like He Gets Us to the local church where ministry wants to happen and people that can serve. So that's what I'm going to walk you guys through. To spend a few more minutes on the details around He Gets Us, you know, it is things like people on the left side, they're, they're asking, you know, why the church? Why, why would I go to the church? So many of the people that we asked in that video, they were surprised when we asked them, would you ever go to the church? Like, no, I'm, that's not a consideration. Or, yeah, I grew up there, but I don't really think about that anymore. They, there's a lot of people that, that kind of stand on the line, and they don't necessarily defend Christianity, but they also don't promote Christianity. Um, and on the other side, they see Jesus was for everyone. He loved everybody. His teachings were positive for society and in general. And so you've just got this balance where we try to we try to understand how do we leverage the moment. And so he gets us is one, it will be the largest faith related campaign in United States history. Uh, has about $150 million committed to year one. That is year one so far. $150 million will be devoted to running campaigns like the ones that you're going to see in just a second, all around the United States in major TV sporting events. Uh, we, we didn't make it in time for Super Bowl, but we will make it in time for some other major sporting events that are coming up that um, I'm not supposed to name. But there are some really cool things happening around the He Gets Us campaign. In fact, in your area, you might have, you might have seen them throughout the NFL playoff season. Um, just on TV. Jessica, I see you shaking your head. And so there's a, a creative team behind this. They've worked on brands like the ones that you've seen. And we've got a question. We said, what if Jesus would actually be the biggest brand in 2022? What if when you thought of some of the coolest commercials you've seen this year, Jesus was the brand? And so we were able to have Jesus up there with the likes of Coca-Cola and Disney, who, who seemed to take over our TV screens and all of a sudden, now it's the message of Jesus, and it's the message of hope. Um, it is working so far. On December 1st, we did run that pilot. That's why you've seen those TV commercials. We launched in five cities with this campaign. Um, Dallas-Fort Worth was one of the cities that we launched it in, along with uh, Kansas City, Columbus, um, Charlotte, South Florida. And we are getting ready to go national on March 15th. Already, this campaign has had over 30 million YouTube views. You can go to YouTube and you can search He Gets Us. You can see all of the campaigns. You'll see how all the, the commercials that are out there are also done in Spanish. Um, in fact, all of the ads everywhere are also done in Spanish. Um, to give you an idea on 30 million YouTube views, if you were to launch a YouTube channel today and over the next two months generate 30 million views, YouTube would write a check for you for around $50,000. That's to give you an idea of how successful so far this campaign has already been. And it's been with a really small portion of money compared to the 150 million. We're about to 15X the amount of capital that's going into this campaign compared to what's already been spent. So when I show you these results, keep that in mind. Uh, let me show you this other video. This is an actual commercial from the He Gets Us campaign. Give you an idea of what it is that people are seeing. A caring man took a walk. He saw people suffering. Anxiety ran high, hatred rose. I'll prepare a feast and bring them together, he thought. But some refused to join him. He was heartbroken because he wanted everyone to be filled, not with food and wine, but with compassion. There's a lot of other ones out there. That's just an example of one. They are pretty short, pretty to the point, um, really simple spots. A caring and, man. Uh, again, I'm going to have to stop my share. Sorry, y'all. Let me do this one more time. 
There's not just TV commercials, though. Uh, you will see this all over the place. You might see billboards. You might see uh, bus stops. You'll see a lot of print media. You'll see it all over social media. And uh, you'll see all of these different types of, of ads. Uh, just trying to understand and relate to the individuals that were on that skeptic screen and the individuals that are talking in that video and the individuals that aren't traditionally walking into our churches on Sundays. Um, we use language that the He Gets Us campaign uses language that you don't often see on church print and in church media. If you go to hegetsus.com, you will see things like, hey, would you like to reach out for prayer and positive vibes? We don't talk about positive vibes a whole lot in the church, but you know who does use the term positive vibes? The world. And so how do we get out there and start to have conversations with them using some of their own language? Here's how it works. We are actually running ads. Those ads will point everybody to hegetsus.com. So if you are wanting to take the next steps and you, you see one of these ads somewhere, uh, you go to hegetsus.com and you have the op opportunity to take five actions on there. Other than just read about um, everything that the website says, you can chat with an individual where somebody should be able to respond to you within 60 seconds. You can connect with someone local. That's where you come in. Um, you can text for prayer or you can read about Jesus. And so we've partnered with YouVersion and the Bible app to actually have a He Gets Us um, Bible reading plan that uh, we've seen a whole lot of people go through. In fact, I would encourage you to actually go through it um, now. It's, it's very encouraging, uh, very insightful to what explorers are experiencing when they first engage. Uh, I mentioned that it's working. In just a second, I'll show you how many of these connections we've already made to local churches, even just in this pilot program. Some of you that are on the call have already received these connections. You're already receiving connections. You, you know a lot about this campaign, um, and so you know what to expect. I'd love to hear from you. We're going to open it up in a few minutes for just some q and I'd, I'd love to hear from you uh, of what you've experienced. Maybe share uh, what, it's, what it's like. What, what are the conversations that you're having? What are the questions that are coming in? Uh, but these are the top topics, the, the topics of uh, what explorers are reaching out for. And so you can see 647,000 visitors have made it to that website so far. The number one thing that people are asking for is prayer, prayer by far. In fact, uh, I think prayer is accounting for roughly uh, half of the connections or close to half of the connections that are being made. Uh, next is things like loneliness and sadness. And you will have access to these things too. When, when you create your account, you'll have access to this data so that you can keep track of what are the trending things that people are coming in for. This will change week over week. Um, things like loneliness and sadness, they, they tend to stay towards the top, uh, but you will see things like hope start to float up. You'll see other words start to float up, especially around the holidays, uh, but this gives you an idea. So we've talked about hegetsus.com. Um, something that's interesting to note as you're thinking about how this is going to impact ministry, the number one times throughout the day that we see ministry needing to happen is usually when ministry doesn't traditionally happen. Um, it's not usually when we are in our churches or on Sunday mornings or on Wednesday nights. We do have a lot on Sunday mornings, but a lot of them happen on weeknights later in the evenings. You can see things like 7, 8 p.m. is a really hot topic um, all throughout the week. Thursday, 7 p.m. is one of the, the most dense times of when we get responses. Um, that tends to be when people start going looking for answers and they, they really want to solve something in their life. So to date, we have passed 18,409. I updated this number just before we hopped on and I put the plus symbol there because I can almost guarantee that that number has gone up since we started this call. Uh, we're seeing over 150 um, explorers a day are coming in right now across the nation. So there is a job to do, there is a gap there that we have to fill. And uh, let me show you this video, last video that I'll show you, this one's about two minutes long, and it really explains how does this work for churches that want to participate. Glue is a new kind of outreach platform designed to enable your church to reach your city in a new way. Our goal is to help you serve more people and see more lives changed each week. It all starts by meeting people where they are. There are people all over your city who are wrestling with big life questions. Some just need prayer, want to know more about Jesus, and others are struggling and need help. And the problem is that they're trying to find those answers online instead of turning to the church. And when they do, they're getting answers like this. That's where we come in. Glue connects you to the digital campaigns that our Kingdom Minded Partners are running. 
These ongoing campaigns are designed to reach people in their moment of need, especially those who don't normally go to church. We call them explorers. So instead of seeing an answer to their question like this, they'll encounter a message of hope. Then they'll have the opportunity to connect, and if they're interested, we'll deliver them directly to you. From there, you get to do what you do best, build relationships. To get started, join Glue and fill out your church's profile. Next, grab a cup of coffee and wait while we send real people right to your Explorer inbox. You can respond directly, assign them to a team member, and update their status after reaching out. We've also put together a library of resources and training materials, as well as a private Facebook community to equip your team to serve your new connections and engage them well. This is just the tip of the iceberg. Glue is full of outreach and communication tools that help you increase your impact right in your city and serve more new people each week. You won't need to hire more people and we'll do all the heavy lifting with campaigns, leaving the ministry work for you. It's like having a full-time outreach team on staff. Sign up today and join over a thousand churches nationwide supercharging their online outreach with Glue. All right. Hey, guess what? I can now change the screen. Glue is a new kind of outreach platform designed. I spoke too soon. I thought I was going to brag on myself. You think I know how to work Zoom? All right. So um, that's the logistics of how it works, what you can expect. In fact, some of you that are have already signed up, you're going, hey, those are there were some screens in there that I haven't seen before. That's because that was the first glimpse um, that almost anybody has seen, by the way, of the new glue that we'll be rolling out next week. Um, so stay tuned for that. That'll be coming. You'll see those updates. You'll be getting emails about how to access the new version. Um, just a second. I'll show you if you have not already created your glue account, how can you get in and, and start that process today? Um, what I'm showing you is uh, to set a little bit of the urgency, and I'm going to zoom into Dallas in just a second. But what you're looking at is across the United States, the blue spots represent explorers that are coming in, and the red markers represent churches that are already participating across the United States. Uh, we're nearing 2,000 active churches that are participating to receive explorers. Um, we have had about 18,000 connections, as you saw earlier. And again, all of this is within a pilot phase. And this is all pre the $150 million budget of year one. So as this ramps up, we are expecting close to a million explorers, maybe more. Um, hard to say. This is kind of the first time this has been done. But based on our projections, we could see a million explorers come in. We need more ministries to, to close the gaps. Um, and I'll show you why. All as these blue spots start to fill in across Dallas. Um, right now, Dallas is one of our five cities, and so that's why you have some density already. But on March 15th or around March 15th, the campaigns go national. All of this area out here will start to fill in. Explorers from outside of the Metroplex will start to show up, and they'll start to say, hey, I do want to talk to somebody. I, I am raising my hand. I, I do want somebody to pray for me. I would like to go to coffee with someone. I would like to come check out their church. I, I would like to learn more about this guy named Jesus. And we don't have enough ministries that are participating just yet. And so we are on a mad dash right now. Glue has completely reorganized as a company to start helping spread the word so that we can get more churches raising their hands saying, yes, we want to close those gaps for you. So that's really the urgency around it. That's why we're launching a new tool to make it easier for you to connect. We believe that capacity needs are going to start to increase. Uh, and so we are building in communication tools to make it really easy for you to communicate. Some of the tools that you saw in that video are SMS text messaging. Texting has a 98% open rate. Uh, we believe that we will see a dramatic increase in the number of explorers that respond and, and actually engage in conversation with you as ministry leaders. So you are probably asking, you know, well, what do I do to get started? And we'll end on this. Um, and... Uh, let me back up just a second. Sorry, I'm getting a glitch on my side. Okay. Uh, if you do not have a Glue account, you can scan the QR code with your phone or you can go to platform.glue.us and you can sign up. Um, if you already have a Glue account, the updates that I talked about, you're gonna be getting an email pretty soon letting you know how to access that new version. Um, and so you're already set. One of the things that you might need to do if you already have a Glue account is turn on Explorers because your Explorer settings may not be configured just yet. So we can talk about that. 
but guys, I want to thank you so much for joining us today. I hope this has been encouraging. Um, the amount of energy rushing beside the ministry that is already happening is increasing every single day. Um, people are showing up from all over the place saying, we want to see the message of the gospel scale like it never has before. Um, and so I'm really thankful. Jessica, thank you so much again. Owen, thank you so much. Happy to take any questions. I see some chats. I'll open those up. We can go from there. Thank you, Steele. And I, and I do thank you. Um, you know, I was doing some private messaging with some people on here and I, and I was saying, I'm just really thrilled that Blue is, you know, putting this kind of resources behind there and has really wanted to include uh, the United Methodist in referring people to us. And so, um, um, I will pause now. I'm not sure. I, did anyone see me? I'm not sure I saw any direct questions that were lifted up in the, uh, in the chat, but we'll give an opportunity now if somebody wants to, uh, lift up a question. If not, we'll get off a little early today. Um, yeah, we have a question here. It says, uh, from Cindy Kennedy. She says, um, we are in a small town that is set to grow quickly. Any ideas? Yeah, Cindy, uh, I'm interested. What, what is the small town that you're in? Um, but to, to start to answer your question, what, what you're seeing is, and you saw it a little bit in the video, you would have seen Church's Care. If, if you came on with us uh, early on, then uh, Church's Care was one of the first campaigns that launched. And we had a directory. If, uh, I think some of you participated in that, where we were driving explorers to uh, Christmas services in 2021. And, uh, and actually, that was one of the emphasis late in 2020 was, hey, let's go back to church for Christmas. Oh. And um, that campaign is still active. Church's Care is still an active campaign. And it's really a felt needs campaign right now. And so he gets us. We spent most of the time today talking about he gets us. It is just one of many campaigns. Uh, I'm really excited to announce that The Chosen is going to be partnering with us to launch their own form of these types of campaigns. The Chosen TV series uh, actually has a lot of people already that reach out to them and say, hey, I, I want to know more about this guy named Jesus. Can you tell me where I can learn more about him? And they don't know what to do with them. They don't know how to hand them off to local ministries. They, they don't have a, 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 a tool that can do that. And so we are going to step in and we're going to close that gap for them. And so if you choose to participate in that campaign, which is just going to be a setting in your glue settings, then you will start to receive people that have seen the chosen and say, I want to talk about that. I want to talk about what I saw. Um, there's several campaigns. We expect there to be over a dozen active campaigns by the end of the year. And, um, and so to take that back to your small town, there, will, there might be campaigns that target specifically rural areas, and they speak differently to certain geographics of the country. Um, there will be campaigns that target different types of felt needs. It won't just be about the things that you've seen. It won't just be about skeptics or people struggling with anxiety, people struggling with depression. Um, it'll also start to branch out into other areas of life, like marriage and family. And so this, this model, if you will, is scalable, I would say, to all geographies. And it is focused specifically in the United States. We are working, though. What does this look like globally? Um, but that's a great question. And, uh, and I would say that it is made by design to be able to scale to these different cities. And Cindy, I'll add to that. So on one of the on one of these presentations, I don't remember which one I was paying attention to the maps and they're in Lamar County, which is Paris is the county seat. Uh, mm -hmm. There was all of these. There was a there was a number of requests. And so there it, they'd showed us showed me a map that said, here's where our requests are and here's our churches. And so they had these requests in Lamar County, but there was not a single church in Lamar County that had registered. And so those persons who, who got a request said, well, you know. And I get referred to a church in you know, Greenville, but there right. wasn't a church in that area. And so there are, again, you know, they're talking about targeting, you know, different groups and so forth. But what with what they have already done, they're getting mm -hmm. inquiries. They're getting inquiries from um, from rural areas already. And so from a diverse area, uh, John, the the uh, what is the cost for us? I'll let them pitch that as well. Um, and. And in the conversations, uh, the cost has been covered by sponsors to glue. Uh, and so at this season, um, there is not a cost to the local church that the local church is having to cover. 
Yeah. And I, I'm being, I want to be clear that there is a cost. Obviously, there's a lot of costs involved with this, uh, but that cost is, is uh, for, has been covered by a donor. If somebody wants to speak to that. Yeah, yeah, it has. Um, good, good explanation, Owen. There is a cost and, um, you know, it, it is significant. But what we did before we ever launched this initiative is our CEO, Scott, went and visited with um, uh, many family offices and uh, just really blessed um, philanthropist and uh, Christian leaders around the United States. And they said, we want to come alongside ministry. I mean, it, it really has been framed since the start, guys, this is a rescue opportunity. This is a rescue mission for us to rush in and say, what, where are the gaps? Where do we need to close the gaps? And that's what's happened. Um, the 150 million is coming from just the He Gets Us campaign. That is a totally separate campaign. That's not even including the millions of dollars that have already been raised to cover the cost for every church that's participating. Um, so yeah, th there is no cost. Um, that is, we, we have scholarships that will cover at least the next 12 months of this. And so as you start to come in and you sign up, you're covered for your first year. And uh, we hope to keep that the case. Uh, we'll continue to go out and raise more funding and make sure that this uh, stays in a place where it doesn't become a burden um, to local ministry budgets. So with our next question that I saw in there from Angela Williams, do we need only one account per church or should each pastor open an account? One, one account per church. It, it is set up in a way that you can add a bit additional team members. Great question. Um, but we, we do have it set up to where you can manage what's going on around your church. Um, and um, it is also so that you can assign out those explorers that are coming in to different people on staff. And then they'll be able to all communicate through the same account. So if they do choose to communicate via the text messaging tools that are in uh, Glue, then you'll have the ability to keep track of who's being responded to, how long is it taking to respond to people, how many of your people are getting responses back, that type of thing. There is training, guys, that, you know, when, when we talk about cost, um, we don't want to ignore the fact that there is going to be a process where you have to ask, you know, are, are my people ready? Are, is, is our congregation ready to have these types of conversations? If I wanted to pull people in, is my staff ready? Do I have volunteers that are coming alongside me? Am I ready to have these types of conversations? Um, I will say this for anybody that is wondering, you know, hey, we might have some really tough conversations. Uh, I was talking with um, the team at Life Church a few weeks ago, and he made a really good comparison. He said, so far, our experience with these connections are that it's a lot like prayer requests. There's some prayer requests that we get that are, hey, they're, they're pretty average. And we're like, yep, we know exactly how to respond to that. We, we follow up really quickly. There's others that are a little bit, they, they grow in severity. And then there's some that are just like, man, we need to make sure that we respond correctly and that we actually pull in additional resources to help with this situation. Um, there might be things like that. Let me tell you that they have already been filtered. By the time they get to you, anything that is extremely severe and needs an immediate follow-up from a professional is being uh, filtered out and they are being handled by professional Christian organizations. Um, and, and we are seeing things like that. People that are in very, very severe places, we have seen those, uh, but we are keeping those from being passed along to, to churches. Um, so something to just be aware of. Yeah, thanks for that. And I think that's real helpful because there is some trepidation. You know, when, you, know you hear people are dealing with depression and are, are other um, um, severe issues to know that many of those are being filtered out, but I do think there's also probably additional training in the same way you would train whoever's working the front desk at your church. When that, when somebody walks in, how do you respond to them? You know, in the same way we have a new front door to our church, which is online and being, having that same kind of training of how do you respond to certain situations really helpful. Yeah. Uh, the next question was when someone fills out the connect with someone local form, what is the algorithm that determines which church uh, is contacted? That's a great question, Kevin. And that's something that, that we are working pretty tight on. Glue is known for our ability to run data models and to really understand people. Um, our journey right now, the, the, the season that we are in, is to maximize the number of people filling out those forms. In order to do that, we've got to be pretty limited in what we ask of them. And so we are not able to capture a whole lot of information just yet about, um, you know, exactly the season of life that they're in. We know what they're asking for. They have an opportunity to type in what they're, what they're struggling with. Um, but what we are doing right now is we're maximizing connections. 
we're doing that based on proximity right now and, and based on how uh, churches are responding, how many re uh, Explore Connections churches can receive. And so there's not a whole lot of science in it right now other than these people are looking for the message of hope, the message of the gospel. You are a ministry who says, I can deliver the message of hope, the message of the gospel. Um, that is about the extent of that connection today. We are going to advance that pretty quickly over the, the coming months. Uh, we will start to know more about your ministry and what it is that you offer. We're going to start to know more about those explorers and what it is they're looking for. And so we will be able to make better connections, not just based on proximity in the future. But great question. Um, and I can answer the, uh, the next question from April. Is the theology United Methodist? This is not a United Methodist organization. It's a ecumenical organization that's seeking to connect um, a diversity of churches. And I just put the link in there from the that shows a lot of the YouTube videos that would be shown. And and so you can be uh, you can be very aware of what you would be connecting your local church to. Uh, and I would not be promoting it if I found um, anything that there that's being advertised as contrary to our theology, but it's definitely not United Methodist specific, because this is very much designed to be a, a Christian uh, uh, ecumenical approach, um, and of which I'm thankful that they have, um, have chosen to include uh, the United Methodist in those efforts. And so I put a link in there. You can watch more of the videos. Um, you can seek and determine whether it's something you want to uh, connect your local church to as well. So a good question with that. Um, anybody, the Jasmine Rivera asked, will the trainings be done on site? Tell, uh, can you speak more about the trainings that you offer? Yes, I can. Sorry, right, Peter, I was just reading your, your question as well. Um, we, we do offer a, a number of questions. W were you asking me that by the way? I'm sorry. Or was that Jessica? Yes. Jasmine asked about the, you'd mentioned about trainings. Yes. Can you speak yeah. more about that? Uh, so yeah, we, we have, when you sign up and Jessica, this is going to answer the question that you, you asked as well. What happens when you sign up, when you sign up, you are going to get access to a resource library. Uh, there's lots of videos. There are how to's there. There's a whole guide that says, hey, here's a lot of the, the responses that we're getting from explorers. Here are the questions that they're asking. And maybe here's some guides on you know, how you might train people to respond to them. Um, we are not trying to really bring any, any sense of a specific theology other than Jesus and, and uh, scripture. And so he gets us, I, I will say to respond to the, what you were just talking about, Owen, um, this is not any one particular denomination uh, although that you are not the only people asking that question, this group is not the only people asking that question. Um, but the family that is behind this, they've been asked to remain anonymous, but the, you would know them. You would know their names. You would be, um, in fact, I bet a lot of you participate in some of the, their businesses, um, and they have been championing Christianity for a long time, the family that is behind this. Um, and so much like the chosen the goal is to remain directly in scripture and just tell what the Bible says about Jesus and who he was and what he stood for. Um, so that's the primary objective of this particular campaign. There will be other campaigns that might lean into different denominations as, as we uh, go along. I'm not sure. I don't know of any that are right off the cuff, but I know that there will be some that start to focus on various things. Um, so yeah, in terms of training, it is, how do we speak to those things? How do we answer questions like that? You won't be the only ones that have those questions. Your congregants who's, who wanna lean in on this and are seeing these commercials, they might come to you and they might have these questions. Your staff is going to have these questions. Um, so we wanna equip you to, to answer those. We don't do a whole lot of on-site trainings. We expect there to be a lot of events. Um, our role is really leaning in with Jessica, leaning in with Owen and equipping them and giving them back the data that allows them to better serve as well. And, uh, and so, you know, Jessica, and as, as you guys are thinking about how do you start to respond to just the, the reaction after the next few months, you know, how do you guys think about um, convenings and, and doing more of things like this? Yeah, we'll be interested in following up, see how many churches are getting involved. Um, um, and as we're wrapping up, if you have further questions uh, or want to know more, uh, Jessica is our go-to person in the Center for Church Development as the mission coordinator. 
you can send uh, you can send connections to her, and she can connect you with uh, uh, she can point you in the in the right direction. Um, we'll, uh, just saw one come in that will will there be a community within the United Methodist Church to discuss the learning or perhaps a pilot program to talk about effectiveness? Yes, and so we're staying connected with Glue. And so Glue is gonna know automatically who in the North Texas Conference is getting registered. They'll be able to share you know, what kind of references they are. And then we will want to know on the other side of this, are you getting references? Is this working? Is this something we need to, you know, we're, you know, the kind of question about, uh, is there a pilot program? We're in the pilot program. This, <laughs> we are piloting a program right now. Now there's been some pilots before this, but this is, a, this is still, I would say very much in a pilot uh, phase for all of us. Um, and so we'll be wanting to continue to get feedback on that. Um, yeah, very anything, well done. Yeah. Anything else that we, that still you want to share? Jessica has some announcements that we want to make sure we get on people's calendars uh, before before we get off here, but I'll turn it over to, to you or Chris or anyone else from Blue for any final words. But that's it from us. Thank you so much. Thank you for the time, everyone. Thank you for leaning in on this. I look forward to staying close with you and uh, just hearing how, how you're, what you're experiencing out there. We will be reaching out as you sign up. We'll reach out um, just to create a line of contact as you have questions, uh, as you're participating. The number one thing I would say after you create your account, if you scan that QR code and you just fill out the form there, um, be on the lookout for an email that's going to be coming in the next few days with details on how to access the new tool where the, the communication side of it is coming in. Um, and then get ready because the second week of March is when things are really expected to fire up in a big way. Um, so that's the timeline. Thanks so much, everyone. Thanks, Owen. Thank yeah, you. I, thank you. Um, still, I just wanted to point something out that you, you had mentioned and we have this concept before and it's that the campaign is also um, available in Spanish. So um, for our Latin pastors or our pastors who are um, in Spanish speaking churches, um, and or speak Spanish, there is also that availability. Like the campaign is, is running also in the Spanish language. And as part of uh, for our Center for Church Development, we have an exciting opportunity to meet with Pastor Nathan Webb. Um, he is the pastor of a virtual church. They call he called himself the Nerd Pastor, and it's a church about for gamers and um, um, for uh, they call themselves nerds. Um, and we're going to be meeting with him in March 22nd at 1.30. And um, he'll be talking to us about how the church runs and how everything, you know, um, is going for the church and all the wonderful things that he has been um, doing. We also will have a conversation with Royce Ford. Um, he's a reverend in our conference. and He just uh, um, wrote a book. And there will be, um, we will have a conversation with him. And we're still setting up the day, but it will be around Mar uh, April. Uh, I'm sorry, May or June, um, that we'll be talking with him as well. Those are the events. Be on the lookout. We're posting our events on Facebook. We're posting them on our webpage um, and the NPC, um, UMC org website. Um, you will see all of our, our all of our events um, coming up. And um, thank you all for uh, being here and for participating um, with, with us today. Thank you. All. Yeah, Jessica, I just put in a link in about our March webinar, which is going to be Nathan Webb, who is doing online community building. And so online discipleship, as so many of our churches have moved to putting their worship services online, he's mm -hmm. going to be uh, focusing on how to do uh, online community and online disciple discipleship. And so uh, put that on your calendar, March 22nd at 1.30 p.m. Well, once again, I thank Blue um, for for being here, for being so intentional about including the United Methodists and, and um, specifically the United Methodists of the North Texas Conference. I thank Jessica Vargas for, for coordinating this, putting together, and I thank all of you for the ministry that you do, that the witness that you are in your community, and just pray God's blessing and extra portions of grace, and may the Lord use this, this tool to send people uh, to encounter the grace that is being experienced in your local churches. So God bless you all. And thanks again for joining us.